Hello, this is Swiptail and this has uh, been the day you all been waiting for. I'm finally making a tutorial of my nuclear, no, 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 my computer craft control nuclear reactor. Wow, what a word. Um, I firstly want to apologize to Bob Sherlock. Uh, I know you have really wanted this video. Um, I really didn't have the very, 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 very go for this. Uh, but I finally decided to make this video. I hope you will uh, enjoy this and um, yeah. Uh, if you want to see how this actually looks and works, um, please check out my uh, other video. I'll put a link in the description and uh, this video I will uh, probably divide it up into four parts. I don't know if I can fit all of them uh, into one episode. I won't be able to fill all of them into one episode. So. Uh, I will first cover how I build this whole monstrosity. Wow, this is really big, right? No, it's, it's not. But it's a bit technical if you haven't built something like this before. Uh, and in the second part, I will go in and show you how uh, I connect all the signals and uh, make the interface. And, um, well, basically just uh, see how I can get all of these things to uh, not work, but um, like making the frame to make the program for controlling the the system and when that is in place I'll probably make one part where I only program uh, the uh, the main control system for the nuclear reactor because that is what I uh, probably will take the most time uh, detecting different states making it turn on and off uh, at the right time and such and such and the last part I will uh, cover how I broadcast messages to another computer and make it update uh, information on our monitor for example and uh, uh, giving out an alarm okay so without further ado let's let me show you what I have made uh, this is a cube of uh, reinforced stone and uh, reinforced glass uh, it's not um, tolerant to a nuclear blast because then you need like three uh, three blocks wide uh, wall. Uh, it's reinforced stone, reinforced glass, and you can re use reinforced door. And yes, uh, I also told in my last video that uh, this is the weakest point in in the wall, um, and I used construction foam. The way you do that is you get CF pellets and CF sprayer. Uh, what the CF sprayer does, it's just like makes a lot of foam. Uh, foam is quite easy to um, uh, to punch away. Uh, you can just use your hand or whatever. I'm in creative, so it goes away, uh, anyways. And uh, what will eventually happen is uh, the foam will um, uh, stiffen and it will get uh, almost the same blast resistance as as the wall. So it's not not as uh, as good, but it will be be quite good um, if the nuclear reactor where to blow up it would actually go out and make a long tunnel I guess so uh, in here is a nuclear reactor I won't show any receipts because showing receipts will take ages ages I tell you and there's a huge change in nuclear reactors since I made the first video uh, earlier you had to actually apply a signal to stop the reactor to shut down the reactor now you have to apply a signal to start the reactor, um, which made me th have to think about uh, another solution for one of my signals, because this one will, uh, it's a um, wireless receiver, it looks like this, you can browse it, and uh, it will actually give a signal to start the reactor. Uh, what I want in my system, I want to know when uh, if the uh, reactor is not running. And for that, uh, I need a signal when there is no signal. What do you do? Well, we use a NOT gate. A NOT gate just inverts the signal and sends a signal back to wherever I need it. Do I have... yeah, a wireless transmitter I'm using. I don't think I have the NOT gates here. It's it's called NOT gates. NOT gates. NOT gates. This cutie. Okay, so there we have starting our reactor and we have a uh, feedback of if as if uh, the reactor is not running at all so we will get into uh, what I'm using those signals for as you see I'm using glass fiber cable 
uh, and the main reason for that being uh, this little thing because this little thing has the same capacity as a glass fiber cable and uh, it's 512 EUs per tick that means if you try to push more through it it will actually just melt uh, so if you use heavy voltage cable which can uh, transmit 2048 uh, it doesn't matter this one can't take more through anyways and you just melt it uh, and it will uh, give a redstone signal whenever it's EUs passing through it let's see it's EU detector cable okay uh, so let's just show that if we turn on the reactor you see it's producing a redstone signal great uh, the last uh, well not the last but one of the last uh, the last uh, uh, wireless redstone signal is when the EU bank is full uh, what you do is you take the it will be the first uh, MFSU you're using, uh, you're probably using MFSUs uh, and you make it emit a redstone signal when it's full because uh, uh, the last MFSU will fill up first then the second, then the third, fourth, fifth and so on if you have so when the first MFSU in your system coming from the reactor is full your whole system is full and you don't want the system to be running and what you do is you go into the MFSU you click on the the button and you get in your text emits if partly partially filled uh, I believe that's a bit bugged because it says 28 but I believe it's empty because if you, if you say emits if empty you see you get a redstone signal it's great but we wanted to emit if, if full so this one will not get um, uh, it high until it's full uh, that's great um, then you have the thermal monitors uh, in my setup I used five you don't need five absolutely not I just thought it was cool uh, and a, th a thermal monitor remote thermal monitor you can look it up and see the receipt uh, to make this one work you need a, a remote my spelling is bad remote remote sensor kit and what this does it uh, actually uh, records a uh, position of a block so say I want to measure the temperature of this block I click on it and I get a remote sensor mount let's see what's called reactor sensor location card so that's actually the location of that block and I tell the sensor here you go measure the temperature of this block and it will do that if it's within like I think it's eight blocks uh, it is a maximum range ranged um, if they do, do not have any power they will be like dark gray if they're out of range they will be like light gray uh, or if there's no temperature uh, there is some color code uh, I don't remember exactly or if there's um, well if there's any temperature there will be a bar going up whereas the bar will be full when it reaches the temperature of uh, the set points here uh, so you can actually say this will go to 5000 degrees so the bar will not be full and emit a redstone signal until uh, 5000 degrees or whatever unit they are using uh, have been reached okay uh, so to get power to these I'm just looping back the power from uh, the MFSU bank but they require the, the lowest voltage you can get so I'm using a heavy voltage transformator a medium voltage transformator and I'm using a MFE to uh, to have some extra power whenever things are not running uh, and there is a low voltage transformator I just have this generator just to get things started events mm. Maybe there's no, no power in the MFSU and I want to just start powering up before I actually start the reactor. And then we have, oh, there we go, you see. Uh, the, cons uh, the construction foam have uh, stiffened and is blast resistant now. Not immune, resistant. Um, these signals are the color uh, color is not arranged randomly it's uh, arranged in a way so I can easier remember the 
order. Uh, the way these are sorted is the same order as the colors in Minecraft basically will order sort things. So it's uh, white, orange, mag magenta, light blue, yellow, lime, pink, gray and light gray. And if you know binary, um, this will be very helpful because uh, at least for me it's very helpful because I know that if this is the first color this will be the power of 1 and this will be the power of 2 and this will be the power of 4 power of 8 I don't know if it's called power off yeah it's 2 pow uh, powered off no it's, it will be uh, it's, it's, it's wrong uh, this is uh, 2 powered with 0 which is 1 this is 2 powered with 1, which is 2. This is 2 powered with 2, which is 4. This is 2 powered of... Oh, uh, I can't keep track, but this is elite. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. Uh, it's so much easier instead of calculating everything. Oh, it's getting dark. And I run them into bundled cable. Bundled cable and into a computer. Uh, there is one mistake you can do. I did it, for, uh, so I'll tell you about it. If you do do it like this, uh, the computer can actually not read the signals from the bundled cable. Uh, you would actually think it could do it, because if you, if you take a red alloy wire and you pull it up to the computer, the computer can actually read the signal from the red alloy wire, but that is because this one is unisolated. It just uh, can read it, and if you do it like this, it, it, it can't read it because it's, uh, it's insulated. So what you have to do, you have to run the, the cable straight into the computer. And on top of the computer you have a wireless modem, a wireless modem, to transmit signals to this one, which will uh, just stay idle. It, it, this computer will uh, only listen to messages from computers so you can actually use it as a surveillance computer for, uh, from other processes like I did and have it all presented in, in the um, yeah, on, on the monitor like I had um, had a day counter uh, you can actually do that uh, right in my uh, into into the computer but I had uh, somewhere set up a light sensor so every time it got too dark it will actually give a signal now it's a, a new night or something like that and there's a howl alarm uh, at the side, so whenever there's uh, something not right going on, uh, my howler would actually... This was my alarm system, basically. Yeah, I think I've been explaining everything. Um, yeah, of course, these are the four signals we've been seeing. This is uh, transmitting this signal. Uh, we'll start the reactor. Receiving this signal, uh, signal tells me that the reactor has stopped. Uh, well, uh, um, there's no start applied. Uh, this one tells me if it's producing energy, and this one tells me if the bank is full. Yeah. So that's for the whole construction. Um, I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you will actually watch me do some code, because uh, I think this will can be kind of cool. Uh, eventually, I will actually uh, paste bin. Uh, my code if I can. I n uh, never done that on my own uh, server. This is not server it's single player but it should be possible. Uh, something I forgot to mention is that uh, the first time I made this I made it in TechIt. I don't remember the version but uh, this Feed the Beast Direwolf 20 version 5.3.2 have all the components I used back then at least. So you can make it in uh, Feed the Beast as well. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching how this is uh, put together. And uh, yeah, a like would be quite fun. So see you in the next video. Okay, so first let's make the temp level zero. If uh, not temp level one or Ten. Oh, this will be long. Two or temp level three. There's the reason why I shorted down the temp word. Uh, or temp level 
four, four, ten, eleven, 